Howdy everybody, it's Luca Musolesi from Gelato Expert and today I'm going to talk about overrun in ice cream and gelato. As you probably know, air in ice cream and gelato is really important for many properties of the product. But when we are making artisan gelato or artisan ice cream with a batch freezer, we do not have a control over the air that is inside our product. For this reason, sometimes we need to measure it or we want to measure it to have a better idea of what product we are producing. The first step is to define what we mean with overrun. Overrun is the increase in volume of our product after a dynamic freezing. So what it means is that when we start with one liter of liquid mix, we end, for example, with 1.5 liters of frozen mix, hence a gelato or an ice cream, our overrun is the percentage increase in volume. So from 1 liter to 1.5 liter, we have a 50% increase in volume. Therefore, we have a 50% overrun. We can talk about different types of overrun. This is because we could, for example, want to know how is our increase or decrease in volume effectively when we produce our product. What does it mean? It means that if we are producing 100 liters of our liquid mix, we would like to know how many liters we are actually selling. So this might count inside the amount of gelato that is wasted in the machine or during the preparation of the ingredient or during the serving stage. Another type of overrun, that is the one that we are going to talk about today, is the actual overrun. So the theoretical increase in volume, if we could have one liter inside the machine and get all out of the machine and sell it. This kind of overrun is what tells us how much air is in our product, not how much volume of products we are selling. And this value can be interesting for several different reasons. And now we are going to see a few of them. But before, let's talk a little bit about how much is overrun dependent in on our process. Yes, because overrun in a same product can be different depending on how we process our gelato. Particularly, the biggest variation that we have in the overrun of our product happens when changing the extraction temperature. So the amount of air incorporated in our mixture is related to the temperature at which we bring our gelato, our mixture, during freezing. The amount of overrun, so the increase in volume, is increasing until a certain temperature, that usually is between minus 2 and minus 4 degrees, and then after a peak or a threshold, it starts decreasing. It's a little bit like when you're whipping egg whites, that at the beginning, when you start whipping, you have a big volume, with very big air bubbles, but not very stable. And then, while you go on and get a more stable whipped egg white, you get a bit less of a run, so a bit less volume, but smaller air bubbles. Something similar happens also in the gelato. So what happens is that when we are extracting our gelato, if we extract it at a higher or at a lower temperature, we will have different values of overrun for the same recipe. For this reason, if we are measuring overrun in one of our recipes and we really want to know what is this value, we have to pay attention that when we measure it, we process our gelato in the same way, therefore we extract our gelato always at the same temperature or at a similar temperature. In this way we can compare a little change, for example, in our recipe. But if we extract one gelato at minus 5 and one at minus 10, 
the difference of overrun will be also because of the different extracting temperature. Now you might wonder why we want to measure the overrun. Why are we interested in this value? Well, a first example could be that air is for free. So how much overrun we have will also give us an idea of what is the cost of our gelato when we give it to the final customer. Then the amount of air has also an incidence on the texture of our gelato. So having more or less air will make a difference in how we perceive the flavor of our gelato. It will also change the rheological behavior. So how it behaves when we scoop it or when we store it in the freezer. So having more or less air we determine, for example, a um, softer or harder gelato at the same parameters of formulation. The amount of air also influences the melting behavior and the shelf life. For this reason, it might be interesting to know which flavors have higher or lower overrun to have a better idea of how our product can last and uh, stay in the storage. Measuring overrun from a continuous freezer or from even a soft serve machine is relatively easy. When we talk about artisan gelato from a batch freezer, it's a little bit more complex because it's not that easy to fill completely a cup and make sure that there's no gap and at the same time that we are not melting the gelato or we are not putting too much gelato in it. Admitting that we can properly fill cups with our product and measure them properly, how do we calculate the increase in volume? So how do we calculate the overrun? We have two possibilities to calculate the overrun. The first implies knowing the density of our liquid mixture. And then we can measure the weight of our final product, our gelato or ice cream, in a known volume cup. The density of our liquid mixture can be calculated in Gelato Passport, as I'm showing you, or you can measure the density by taking a volume that you know and dividing the mass by the volume of the container. The second possibility is to measure the weight of our liquid mix and the weight of our final gelato in a cup of the same volume, in the same cup, basically. This method doesn't give the approximation of maybe the calculated density. However, measuring the weight of the liquid mix is also challenging. Now that we know what we have to measure, let's go in the lab and define a protocol to measure the overrun. Now that we are in the lab, we have to decide uh, what is our protocol and what are our tools to measure the overrun. So to measure the overrun we can use different types of uh, cups, uh, measuring cups. Uh, what we prefer is a cup that is not too small in the size. We could use a gelato cup, a small gelato cup, but this has a few problems. Uh, in first place this is only 100 milliliters uh, or uh, around 100 milliliters. And this means that when we have 100 milliliters or 100 grams that we are going to weight, two grams of uh, error in the measurement uh, will mean a 2% error in our measure. So if we increase the size of the cup that we are using, then we can decrease the percentage of the error because two grams over 200 grams size cup will mean only 1% error instead of 2%. And this is already helpful. Another problem with this gelato cup is that it, the walls are straight and they create an angle here. This angle means that it's, it will be quite difficult to fill it without having uh, holes inside. For this reason, the tool that I prefer to use is a spherical, a semi-spherical cup. This is actually a simple American standard measuring cup. This is completely round inside, it doesn't have angles. Uh, in this way we can more easily fill it without uh, having the troubles of the 
bubbles or air pockets inside. This is 240 milliliters, so it's already a good size to fill it, uh, reducing the mistakes that we do when we measure. Uh, but at the same time, it's not too big, so we don't have to put too much gelato inside. The next very important tool is a spatula or a knife with a flat, with a completely flat side that we can use to level our gelato in our cup. When we level the gelato in the cup, it's very important that we don't do it exactly perpendicular, but we do it with a 45 degrees angle or so, because in this way, we don't push any gelato out of the cup. If we go perpendicular, we can push the gelato out of the cup. If we go with an angle, we can actually keep all the gelato inside and level it perfectly. The last tool that we need is obviously a scale. We need a precision scale because we want to be as accurate as possible and with the minimum error as possible in the weight measurement. At this point, we can start measuring the overrun. But first, we need to define a protocol to measure the overrun when we want to compare it with other measurements. Uh, as you know, the overrun can change during the freezing in the batch freezer, but it can also change during the storage. For this reason, we have to define when and how we measure the overrun so we can repeat it and compare the measures. I will now explain you my protocol, but of course, anybody can create its own protocol. My protocol is pretty straightforward. It requires measuring the weight in a cup and the temperature. So the first step is to measure the weight of the liquid mix of my gelato in a cup, usually at four degrees. And together with it, it goes the temperature measurement to be sure. After that, I proceed with the production of the gelato. So I produce the gelato, I try to make uh, the gelato always at the same temperature. Then at the extraction of the gelato, I measure the temperature to make sure that I extract the gelato different, gelato that I want to measure always at the same temperature. Then before measuring the overrun, I put it in the blast chiller at minus 38 for five minutes exactly. After that, I measure again the temperature and I measure the overrun. It's not done yet because I leave my product in storage, either in the display case or in the storage freezer, depending on what is the aim of uh, my product, for two hours. And after that, I measure again the temperature and the overrun, so the weight in the cup. This is the protocol, and you can change this uh, however you want. You can skip the blast chiller Part, you can measure the overrun uh, right out of the batch freezer. Sometimes I also do that, I add another step. Or you can also uh, measure it after 24 hours uh, if you are doing a product that has a long shelf life. So for the first step, measuring the liquid mix, we need our measuring cup and we will use two different cups. So a bigger one and a smaller one. And then afterward, we will analyze the data and we will compare them. So for each cup, I will make three measurements. Three times I will measure the weight of the liquid mix and then three times the overrun every time that I go and measure the overrun. This allows me to uh, have a better estimation of the errors and understand if I'm making human errors. For the first step, when measuring the gelato mix, it's really, really important that the mix doesn't have air bubbles. When we are mixing and preparing our mix, uh, it's uh, easy to have air bubbles uh, that they also stay inside the mix, uh, that they can give a different uh, uh, measure to the real one. Uh, so the best way would be to use a vacuum machine. If you have a pressure vacuum machine, we can remove all the air bubbles and then have a liquid without them. But of course, not everybody has a vacuum machine with pressure. Uh, so the other thing that we can do is to sieve through a fine mesh our liquid to try to remove all the air bubbles. At that point, we fill our container cup to the very top and we measure its weight. 
Now I will show you practically the different steps that I'm taking when I measure the overrun. And at the end, we will go back and discuss the results uh, and how to uh, give a meaning to the numbers and how to analyze this data. First, we sieve our mix to try to remove as much as possible of the air bubbles. This point, we start first with a 120 milliliter cup. We have zero on the scale. We still have a lot of bubbles. Now we write down the weight. Then we proceed with the bigger one. As you can see, it's really, really hard because we mix it quite a lot and we have a lot of bubbles. So we should leave it rest and remove a lot of the bubbles. Now we measure the temperature and we measure the overrun in the small cup and in the bigger cup. When measuring the overrun from a batch freezer, it's important to take the part of the batch that is in the middle, not the beginning and not the end, because they can have very different overrun from the main part of the gelato. After filling as much as possible, we go with a knife and we clean it, clean. we cut it clean. Now we measure it and we note it down. Let's now have a look at the formulas to calculate the overrun. The first method is to measure the weight of liquid mix and then the weight of the ice cream in the same cup. At this point we can apply this formula to easily calculate the overrun. The problem of this method is to measure properly the weight of the liquid mix. For this reason it's best to repeat the measurement at least three times and take the average. We can also calculate the density of the liquid mix and compare it with the density estimated by Gelato Passport Plus to have a reference point. The second method is to use the density calculated for your recipe by Gelato Passport Plus or a standard density that you can find on tables online. What we have to do is to then measure the weight of the ice cream in the cup and divide it by the volume of the cup to calculate the ice cream density. At this point, we can use this formula to calculate the overrun. We won't go in depth in the error propagation, but take into account that these measurements are affected by errors and that the calculation will increase the error on the final number of overrun. In spite of the errors, we can still have enough information to analyze the behavior of our recipes. If you have Gelato Passport Plus, you can insert your recipe and the app will calculate you the estimated density that would be in kilogram per liter, which is equivalent to grams per milliliter. In the overrun section, you can find two options. The first uses the estimated density, whilst the second uses the weight of the liquid mix and the weight of the ice cream measured in the same container. When using density, in the first field, you can insert the volume of your container or, alternatively, the weight of water in the container if you don't know the exact volume of it. In the second field, you will put the weight of the final ice cream in your container and the app will calculate the overrun for you. In the second section, you can insert the weight of the liquid mix in the first field and the weight of the ice cream in the second. You will then get the overrun calculation. Clearly, the two overrun values should be similar, within a 5-10% margin of error. If they are completely different, there has been some mistake in the measurement process. As you've seen, measuring overrun is definitely not an easy job. However, even having a rough idea of what is the overrun in our gelato can already give us a lot of information about our product and how about how we can change it. Also, depending on what is the goal of our product, it's really important to measure the overrun at different stages in the production or storage process. 
In this way, we will have a full control of our product and what's happening to it. And if there are problems coming up during the storage, we'll have also an idea of why this can happen. In the description, you can find a link pointing to a few slides regarding the overrun that you can download and keep always with you when you're dealing with gelato. If you want to learn more about gelato, you want to learn formulate your own recipes and you want to learn the science behind it, subscribe to the Gelato Expert Academy, a 40 and plus hours course with the always growing library of courses. For today's video, it's all. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and see you soon.